That is just what men want us to believe. Stupid idiots like, like Frank Horden. Well, I won't be caught up in it, not by him or anyone. <laughs> My Brilliant Career is a 1979 Australian film, uh, which we are talking about because it's August, and August is when I talk about Australian films. <laughs> Um, it's 1901 and Sibylla is a teen with big dreams, but she's stuck on her family's failing uh, selection, which is kind of like a farm, until she's sent to live with her more well-off grandmother. Um, there she kind of shocks people with her brazen, confident um, self, and she's faced with a choice of two suitors uh, or becoming potentially a governess but what she really wants is to do something with her life and have a career um, so the film's directed by Gillian Armstrong she also directed Charlotte Grey and uh, the Winona writer Little Women uh, Sibylla is played by Judy Davis who's in Barton Fink and The Dressmaker and Harry Beecham, who is her one of her love interests in the film, uh, or her male, her major love interest in the film, is played by Sam Neill, who <laughs> you know from Jurassic Park. Um, so it's an adaptation of the Miles Franklin novel, and the key production roles of this film were all uh, all female. So female director. I think the writer was female. It's based on a book by a female, um, etc. So it's a bit of a, kind of a feminist film, really. Um, so, a little fun fact. Um, so, Miles Franklin, when she wrote this book, kind of based it on herself and her life a little bit, uh, which caused a little bit of local con controversy in her own town, because people that lived near her kind of thought they recognised themselves in her book um, and Australia was a bit of a smaller place then and where she lived was also a smaller place so um, she actually pulled the book from publication in Australia for quite a long time um, even though it was originally published in Edinburgh where it was actually um, quite popular um, so <laughs> Sibylla herself is kind of lovely she's such a teen um, she's got really frizzy hair and huge expectations. Um, she's wild. She kind of gets the wrong end of things and kind of makes social mistakes and things like that. Um, but a lot of it is just kind of irrepressible charm, I think. Um, her big dream of like being someone and having a career. <laughs> always cracks me up because for most of the film she isn't talking about being a writer she's like maybe I'll be an opera singer or maybe I'll be a concert pianist and like she doesn't really know what it will be she just knows it will be something I, don't know, I kinda like that about her she's pretty cool so she has two suitors one of them is uh, an English guy who um, has a lot of money and then there's Harry Beecham who owns a few a few different properties so he's played by Sam Neill he's pretty great um, he's kind of they're an interesting team up so he's kind of quiet and she's kind of loud he thinks and feels things and she says everything and then apologizes later he's kind of restrained and smoldering <laughs> As opposed to her kind of bright spark and flame so you don't always know how he feels sometimes in the course of this film which is kind of fun because you can tell that she is starting to fall for him but he's not uh, really open with how he feels you know you know there's something there but you know there's also other people he might be interested in so um, yeah, and he's an interesting comparison to her other suitor, who's kind of, kind of yucky. <laughs> like, 
He's kind of salty, and at one point he says that like, oh, you know, you'll have to marry me because you can't do any better. And it's like, it's not really much of a choice, you know? Whereas uh, Harry kind of understands her a bit more and embraces her, um, the other sides of her, you know? Um, but being 1901, uh, wanting her to sort of be his wife, ultimately means changing her um so it's kind of an interesting situation uh yeah so she's really sure about her career whatever it's gonna look like um over the like by the end of the film it becomes the book and she sends off her manuscript at the end um which you kind of know will become the story of the manuscript is kind of the story of the film or it's about her life. Um, so yeah, she ultimately chooses herself and her career over romance, which is um, kind of cool. And very unusual as well. Um, it seems kind of a shame that she couldn't, you know, she wanted to write, she wouldn't be able to marry. It's like, I'm glad, I'm glad that's kind of not a thing anymore. Um, so Australia here is um, kind of beautiful. Uh, Sibylla seems to like sitting in trees or running around outside. Um, so we see a bit of the uh, the landscape and things like that. She's kind of a little bit reminiscent of um, Jo March in Little Women. She's a similar sort of uh, tomboy, you know, creative um, type. Grim, what are you doing? Grim. My cat is being a cat, basically. <laughs> um, normally he's so good when I record. Um, yeah, but it's kind of a little bit different. So, um, a few Australian films were in this sort of 70s and 80s were based on sort of classic Australian literature and this kind of fits into that mold but it has a female main character which is a little bit unusual it's a little more feminist um but not overly so not uncomfortably so just sort of she really wants her career more than anything else you know um but also the farms uh the farms and things like that in this are sort of muddy and there's not this sort of romantic idea of farming. It's um, hard work. It's being on the brink of uh, bankruptcy a lot. You know, that kind of thing. So it's not, it's kind of a romantic landscape, but also <laughs> kind of pokes holes in some of the romantic ideas people living in the city probably have about living in the country. Um, <clears throat> so women in this are a little bit like, indentured servants um there's a part of this film where sibylla um, <clears throat> is promised by her sort of given by her family as a governess to pay back money that they borrowed so women could be sort of bartered as labor um the people she goes to are pretty hard scrabble but they're not bad people um, but they're tough and their life is tough um, and you can kind of see that life as a farmer's wife to somebody like Sibylla who has a creative mind um, or a sort of intellectual leaning would be very difficult and very kind of soul crushing whereas for other people um, it's kind of the opposite so I feel like that's kind of well shown here um, you just can't see her as being a mother of 12 children out in the middle of nowhere. Um, so yeah, there's a lot of kindness in this film in the face of hardship. Um, cause the family she works for are quite sympathetic towards her over time. Uh, and she helps people out that are struggling as well. We see some scenes of her giving things away and caring about people. So. I think that's kind of nice. Um, so 
so yeah, you kind of see that it's a Australia is a beautiful place with a beautiful landscape, um, but that it's a, a lot of it is hard work. Um, it's not an easy or romantic view, and for women, probably for everybody, but you kind of see it in this film. You know, for women, it's either get married or have a career, and there's no guarantee about the career. And <laughs> your window for getting married is quite narrow as well. And if you don't have money of your own, uh, like you don't, your family doesn't have money, your options are more limited. Um, and also, if you don't marry, you could end up as a kind of a governess or some kind of work that you're really not suited for and that's quite miserable. <laughs> um, so yeah, this is kind of part of the new wave in Australia, which is um, kind of in the 70s. Lots of films about Australian people and Australian ideas and the landscape was often foregrounded in these films um, and um, yeah so it kind of celebrates Australiana through national literature here. So Miles Franklin was quite a popular writer not just in Australia but in other places too. Um, yeah, but it's a little bit subversive because it's not Henry Lawson and the man from Snowy River and those kinds of stories. It's a, a woman's story. Um, not just interesting to women, but, you know, the main character is female. Um, it's a really good story. All the characters are really interesting. Probably Sevilla the most, but um, I quite like the other people around her too. They They have their own stories and they're all interesting and... No one's too one-dimensional, um, but the main character is a woman with ambition who pushes for more from life. So it's feminist, it's beautiful, um, Sibylla doesn't care about anything, <laughs> which is kind of fun. Um, I love the, her hair is just fuzzy and there's a point in the film where somebody mentions her hair and she's like, you know, it's sort of... She doesn't think she's very attractive, so she's like, it's the best thing about me. And I'm like, it's so fuzzy, though. <laughs> so there's kind of fun, um, fun moments in this film. It can be funny sometimes, um, but it's kind of earnest. And the costuming and the, um, the sort of period details are really fun to kind of sink into. Um, but yeah, it does kind of encapsulate the independent Australian spirit um, but here it's kind of personified in the feminine instead of the masculine um, and it's interesting because because of the social world of Sibylla she's often around you know women more than men and it's their adherence to social mores and convention that's actually more oppressive than you know the men around her that who mostly just kind of laugh at her and don't really don't really mind not really offended um and they all the women all hope that she becomes kind of a young uh a nice young lady and marries well so it's kind of an interesting point i think perhaps the women understand a little bit more um what can happen to a woman who makes bad choices whereas the men in the film probably don't have as much awareness of you know what women's lives are like and things like that but it's still an interesting <laughs> interesting little side note um so yeah if you want to watch an australian film um it's a, a really good one it's one that i think we used to watch it in school i remember watching it um being made to watch it in high school by i think it was one of my english teachers or something like that um and it's nice it's kind of different to a lot of the other stuff that you see um, with sort of, you know, strong male leads. This is kind of a little different, um, but not so different. Yeah, it kind of is of its time in a nice way. Um, but yeah, it's kind of a really pretty film. Um, I quite enjoy, enjoy just watching her um, sort of in her landscape with her dresses and her hats and that kind of thing um so yeah it's a it's a good one that you may enjoy 
Um, if you've seen this or you want to discuss it a little bit more, um, I will see you in the comments. Uh, otherwise, thanks for watching. And um, yeah, look out for more Australian movies on my channel.